Welcome to another exciting episode of the Super Fantastic Exchange. My name is Gary. Guys, I can't tell you how excited I am to bring to you a special person. I've been following on LinkedIn for quite some time. And in fact, I'm quite the fan of this guy. His book is absolutely incredible. And actually, we're going to bring it up in, in just a few moments. But without further ado, I want to introduce to you an entrepreneur, an author, um, just an incredibly intelligent, creative, smart just a great guy. Let's give it up for none other than William Butler. Y'all give it up for William. <laughs> Gary, man, with, look, those are huge shoes to fill. I don't know if I'm going to be able to uh, honor it here on this, uh, on this oh, show, yeah. but you know, I appreciate all the kind words. Honored and privileged to be here on your show and oh. excited to share this exchange, man. Again, That's to your awesome. point, long time coming, well overdue. <laughs> Let's make it make sense. I love awesome. it. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> William, I, I've, get, I've, I've given everybody just a little glimmer of how incredible you are. I want to give you a chance to introduce yourself a little bit more about who you are and what you do. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So um, just a regular guy, man. My name is William Butler, um, a guy on a mission, right? Um, my mission is to completely eliminate apartment vacancy. Um, as a whole, right? <laughs> From this industry, one lease, one property at a time by investing in consistency, commitment, and people at the end of the day, right? Really pouring into people. So um, that's kind of the mission. I am the principal of the number one nationwide leasing firm in the industry, Empower Property Management Consulting. I am an author of Releasing, a counterintuitive approach to apartment leasing. Um, all things leasing, man, the king <laughs> of leasing. That's, <laughs> I that's love it. it. That is awesome. And I, I love, I, I've seen on your LinkedIn profile, you put the king of leasing and I'm like, Dude, that is so apropos for, for what you're <laughs> doing and 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 what you've done. And I love the um, you know, the things that you've shared and the accomplishments you've done by kind of applying your process with these communities. And you truly have made a huge difference. And, it, and it's incredible. And you know, as a person who I've followed for quite some time and and have admired as a leader in you know the multifamily industry and, and doing some great things. I always like to connect with and, and peek behind the curtain to figure out, okay, this guy's doing incredible things and he's inspiring people. What inspires him? And so I'm glad you and I've had this opportunity to connect. But before we get into what inspires you, I want to bring up again your book, Releasing. Um, it, it's such a, a clever way uh, and approach to, to leasing. And one of the things that I guess it's kind of the umbrella approach that you have. It's called the hitch theory. Yeah. And yeah. it's it's just so smart and it's clever. And before we get into what inspires you, I, I want you to share with everybody what the hitch theory means, where it came from, and and how you're applying it to the things that you're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Well, the well, first and foremost, if <laughs> look, any conversation we'll have outside of this, you'll 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 gain really quickly that I, Will Smith is my guy. I love him, right? <laughs> All things Will Smith. Um, you know, even, even in light of some of the more recent conversations and controversies that are happening, whatever, right? Still stand behind him, that's my guy. Love everything he does. Um, so Hitch was always one of my favorite rom-coms and, and notably it's a lot of other people's, right? I think it's still ranked number three, um, you know, only coming second to like Dirty Dancing and things along those lines as far as like highest grossing romantic comedies I ever wow. created, right? So this, this movie's fantastic, right? And I just always loved it. But the idea behind it is so much so, a lot of times when it comes down to the work that we do in the multifamily, you know, student housing space, a lot of times like we kind of isolate our problems almost as if they're on an island and say this can only happen in multifamily this can only happen um you know in student housing or property management altogether right and we you know like we kind of isolate these problems and say that they're ours and ours alone but in fact if you start looking at things like leasing mm -hmm. from another lens from a different scope honestly if you just change your perspective of it right i'm a firm believer that your per your perspective drives performance the way that you view what you do will always dictate the way that you do what you do so i just kind of like making things simpler right i like taking it off this island and making it more rational and everybody in some way shape or form can relate to 
a relationship, right? No matter what your, your, I guess your taste is or whatever you're looking for, right? If you, if you have a type, no matter what it is in some way, shape or form, you can relate to a relationship. And at the end of the day, when it comes down to leasing, when it comes down to property management, we are dealing with people. This is a people's business, which is very heavily predicated upon the relationships that you can that you can stir up. So releasing the play on hitch, the play on dating is nothing more than tapping into relationships with people, talking to people, one person, one need, one solve, one lease at a time, right? And that's that's releasing. It's tapping into mindset, shifting perspectives. I love this book. Favorite oh, book. Yeah. I like the author too, if I do yeah, so much. The author is pretty cool. <laughs> the book is amazing. And, you know, I, I like how you talked about it where it's, you know, perspective drives performance and if you shift your perspective a little bit and and i like how you're shifting it into pers into a relationship approach that's going to drive your performance and and william you really do a, a great creative job making that shift of your perspective in thank this you. book so thank you <laughs> great guys go out and grab this book i'm going to put a link to get this book on the uh, um uh, on the comments so that way you can get access to it. I highly encourage you to, to grab a copy of it because it really will shift your perspective to drive your performance, just like he said. So, hey, <laughs> what, William, I want to get into, I mean, again, as I mentioned, you are one of those leaders, one of those influencers out there that are making a great positive change. And so I asked you, you know, what inspires you, William? You shared some great notes with me. And, and usually people share like a little nugget. You went a little different. And I like how you did this. And this is going to be a great conversation. You gave me two quotes, powerful, impactful quotes. And, and I'm going to read the first one and I want you to expand on it after I finish it. So the first one reads, if you only do what has already been done, you will only get what has already been gotten. William, unpack this for us. What does that, what does that mean to you? <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. <clears throat> well, so to kind of go into kind of what I'm going to bring it full circle. So a lot of what I do dig in, dig out, right? You heard, you heard my mission. I want to completely eradicate this thing called vacancy, right? <laughs> From the property management realm, right? Multifamily student housing all together. And that's what I spend a lot of my waking hours do doing, right? Um, so again, principle of empower property management consulting, where we thrive is, you know, a lot of our clients bring us in for the sole purpose of doing exactly that, eliminating the apartment vacancy that they have, right? So, you know, they, they'll call us like, hey, Willie, we're at 50%, you know, at least right now, occupancy, we need, we need somebody to come in. We're waiting on Superman, we're waiting on Wonder Woman to come in and save us, right? And then they call us with leasing problems. And then I like to say, hey, after our conversation, you don't have a problem anymore, right? We come in and we take care of it. We fly in like the spot coming out of jumping out of airplanes parachutes coming down and we come in with the sole interest of eliminating apartment vacancy right so yeah. um and it's crazy because a lot of times when we do go in the on-site team you know just blinded by fatigue right they've been hustling they've been going this whole time consistently i can't blame them right um you know the they're constantly going at it, doing the things that they know how to do, but all you know is all you know, right? Um, and, if, and if you're trying everything that you know how to do, us coming in with a fresh set of eyes, it allows us to be able to look at things from a different scope and pivot and be able to offer new perspective and things, and things along those lines, right? So a lot of times, you know, I will come in and, you know, when being evaluated by the property management company or the teams on the ground, they're like, hey, well, we're doing X, Y, and Z, and the market is permitting this X, Y, and Z. Um, you know, what makes you think that you can do anything different, right? Yeah. This is what the market is permitting. And, you know, I, I, I oftentimes, all the time, I'm like, hey, you know what? If all, if we constantly just live solely based on empirical data, mm -hmm. right? We'll only be able to achieve what has already been done, right? Yeah. So if your sole resource, if your sole reason for you not being able to accomplish X is because nobody else has done it, you know, that's that, that's your limitation. That is your roof. You're never going to be able to achieve anything greater than that. We come in with the sole focus on saying, hey, I completely, I get it, right? That's what everybody else is doing. I'm not going to do anything different. I'm going to work harder. Right. I'm going to, I'm going to out hustle you. Right. The, the Mamba mentality from, you know, Kobe Bryant, 
right? Mm -hmm. Why is he why is he greater than that of his co of his counterparts, right? The whole Mamba mentality was designed by him saying, "Hey, I'm just going to wake up at three o'clock in the morning and I'm going to get an extra workout in." So then I'll go home and I'll rest for two hours and then I'll go work out when everybody else is working out. And then I'll get a second workout when everybody else is getting is working out. But that compound hustle that he was putting in, right, uh -huh. made him so definitively superior to that of his counterpart, simply because he was willing to wake up a little earlier and put in one more workout per day, right? Yeah. So if you only do what everybody else is doing, you'll only get what they, they've already got, right? You just gotta be willing to go a little bit more. You have to be willing to do the things that others won't do uh -huh. in order to have the success that nobody else is gonna have, right? And that's 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 where we come in, right? And that's 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 the philosophy behind that quote. Wow, that's that so powerful. There's so many so many things in there. You know, a couple of things stood out to me. One is, you know, I I want to start calling you Superman because you come in, you fly <laughs> in, and you're saving the day. You're using your X-ray vision to kind of uncover, you know, the things that been they've been doing. And now you can take it the next level, the next step. And and Absolutely. and I love how you kind of connected that to, you know, Kobe Bryant, his approach to going more. You know, if, if they're only making 10 calls, you're making 20 calls. If they're doing 20 calls, you're doing 50 calls. And you're just taking it that next step because, like you said, I love that statement. If everybody's doing this, you're going to bring in this. And you're, you're, you're going to get more because of that. 100%. And the, and the greatest joy behind it is, yes, like our clients see a ton of success and like a lot of numbers on the back end. Like they see mm -hmm. the results. Like we've been fortunate enough to boast to, you know, one of our more recent clients, they've seen a 7x increase in their leasing velocity, right? Signing seven leases a week to our first week on the assignment, 70 leases. And then we were kind of pacing around the 30s so much so they were, they ended up, you know, we ended up being able to provide 587 leases for them within a 90 day window. They were head wow. over heels, right? They've yeah. never seen that many <laughs> leases before. So the numbers are fantastic, right? And uh -huh. there's a proven recipe that it works, but the joy is on the other side of it, it's not like we just come in and sign leases and leave, right? Then mm -hmm. that, that would be, hey, you know, give you a lease PMC, right? But yeah. we're called Empower <laughs> PMC for a reason, right? So what we do is we come in and we train the on site team to be able to do what we do as well. So mm. we still have that investment in people all around. And that's, that was kind of the premise behind it all, all together, yeah. right? Is to go in and target two of the major things that, you know, I, I feel are persistent problems in the property management space. It's one, apartment vacancy, right? We all, yeah. look, the way that we all get paid is yeah. if there's a head in the bed. But for some reason, we haven't hacked that issue, right? Vacancy mm. continues to be an issue. But if we can focus on two, a couple things, consistency, I said mm -hmm. it at the beginning, commitment yep. to the task, no matter how grueling the task, right? We're committed to getting it done and people. We, that third box oftentimes is left unchecked so mm -hmm. much, right? Just investing in the training and the empowerment of the people on the ground actually doing the work, right? A lot of us up at this level, we can talk at it, we can sit on seminars, we can do all this different stuff and talk about culture, but we'll go down on the properties and, you know, the, the staff don't even know our mission statements, let alone kind of, you know, the, the practices and different things that they're supposed yeah. to do. So a lot of my passion and a lot of our passion as a, as a company is to pour back into the teams and leave them better than how we found them. Right. So <laughs> well, that's, yeah, man. that's the job. Yeah. I love that because what you, for me, you're speaking my language is you're taking a transactional approach of just going in there and getting leases. You you could do that, just help them get the leases and get out, or Absolutely. you can make it transformational. You get 100%. in there, you get the leases, and you're helping them learn how to do it, empower them to do it 100%. on the back end. Well, intended, <laughs> right? <laughs> I love it. Hey, I want to I want to jump into your second point, uh, or rather, your second quote. So I'm excited, but talk about this one. Success is about supply and demand. If two of us are the same, then one of us is unnecessary. That one kind of hurts. <laughs> it stings, but it's true. And I think there's such it's... a valuable lesson. What's that lesson in this one, William? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I think the overarching lesson, lesson is more so 
identifying how to get a job done is always, it's like, if you see a problem, it's like, oh my God, how are we gonna fix it? But very seldom do we start focusing on who we can surround ourselves by that can offer value that can solve that problem, right? Um, and I learned that, I, I learned it, you know, I, honestly, in building empower itself right it's um you know like me personally I, I this this is me this is my personality right <laughs> and you know i remember i would always like get into well okay let me okay how do i want to approach there's so many different ways that we could go right um yeah. i'm thinking of like just my development in this company or uh, like in this industry altogether right there mm -hmm. was different phases where you know I would want to always be like somebody else. I would always, and, and so much so, all of the leadership that I would be around would say, okay, Willie, if you want to be like me, you have to do X, Y, and Z. And I would constantly strive to want to become like this person. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until I realized like, well, if I'm constantly chasing to be like that person, I'm yeah. dispensable, right? Because if ever I do reach that point and he he and I, or she and I are the same. Uh -huh. One of us is unnecessary, right? It's not about being, it's not about being, or, you know, co like a carbon copy of somebody else or trying to look, I like in my company, the whole concept behind the people that we bring around. And that's essentially what we, what we offer to our clients is good people, yeah. right? People hire us because we have people that are willing to hustle, willing to work, who are creative, who are go-getters. We're working seven days a week, putting, putting every minute of our day and every, all of our effort into accomplishing this goal, right? Go-getters. Yeah. And it's, it's huge. It's huge. And I love it. But if you look at the dynamic of our team, you won't see any of us that are exactly the same everybody brings something unique to the table and usually when i'm interviewing somebody that's kind of the goal right in our interviews i want you to be able to teach me something and if you can teach me something i think you're look you, <laughs> you might be good enough to join the team right because you're pouring into me and whatever you're able to teach me like i'm already here right mm -hmm. and my goal every day is to pour into my team somehow some way to empower them yeah so if i already know what you know we're still meeting we're still meeting right here, right? Yeah. But if you can teach me something, that's adding to the pie. That's adding to the group. That's adding to us, right? If everybody is just a carbon copy of me, we don't need it, right? Yeah. Like I want I want us to grow. I want us to be powerful. And I want each and every one to have their individuality, which is gonna make this melting pot of greatness called Empower PMC, right? It's because we all have something different that we can bring to the table. Yeah. Um, but the moment that I become you, I'm dis I'm dispensable. And yeah, I don't know. That's wow. That's what that's where my mind was. <laughs> and William, you know what that and that's another another piece that you're speaking my language because I truly believe everyone has a gift, talent, or skill that's unique to them. Mm -hmm. And I love how you said, if you're constantly chasing to be like somebody else, then you miss the opportunity to be you. Yourself. And that's the, yep. that's the value. That's the gift, skills, and talent that the people need. And I love how you recognize that and you, you press on that, you push on that and encourage and empower that for your team so that you you've got this like you call it a melting pot of such unique gifts skills and talents that it creates Absolutely. so much more than everybody being the same 100 percent. oh my god <laughs> well, yeah, you are dropping gold all over the place i tell you i gotta get my broom and start sweeping up some of these gold nuggets <laughs> This is brilliant stuff, man. I love what you're doing. And hey, William, it. we're getting close to the end of our time. So I want to give you a chance before we wrap up to share a closing thought before we wrap up. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, a closing thought, interesting. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say this, and it's, I guess two things, right? Um, I, so my kid nephew, right? He, he plays football, right? And uh, he's, if I had a kid, like if, if and when I do have a child, right? He is going to be um, like, he, he, like, that's my spirit child, right? Like he's exactly <laughs> what I want my kid to look like. Um, but, you know, so full of personality. So, you know, like, so in with the times, right? He's watching everything and consuming a lot of content, you know, they're kids, right? Um, <laughs> they have a lot of connectivity, but, you know, he was playing football. And one of the, 
things that the coach had said when I went to go watch one of his football games. It held a lot of weight and, you know, it stuck with me in a, in a profound way. And it was funny because, uh, you know, I kind of apply that to how we operate now. And it's like, mm -hmm. you know, um, so the kid, he was like, he, he wants to get in. He wants to run the ball. He wants to spin. He wants to, you know, and he's, he's, he's into all this fancy stuff. And the coach was like, hey, we play fundamental football here, right? Mm -hmm. Don't be cute. He said, don't be cute. <laughs> I'm talking about when I say fundamental, I'm saying we're putting the two fat guys in the middle. You run to the right. <laughs> Stop being cute. right? And it's crazy because a lot of times when people ask us what we do, it's like this is there, this isn't Matrix. I'm not giving you a blue pill. Right. I'm not. This is nothing crazy out of this world that you can't do. We just fundamentally mm -hmm. lease. Right. We do blocking, tackling. We do things consistently and we do it very well we know how to execute on incoming tours we know how to execute on outgoing follow calls we know how to execute when it comes down to receiving incoming traffic right we just do it and we do it very well consistently and i would urge everyone else who's listening here it's don't be cute right <laughs> sometimes the fundamentals they're not fun but a lot of those things are what practically and rationally will get you across the finish line and get you to where you need to go. Is if, if you do what works, right? Success yeah. comes in, like you can see the patterns, right? In any, in any realm, right? If you follow the recipe, yeah, sure. Add your own herbs and spices, make it fit your palate. <laughs> but if you follow the recipe, you will get there. And then last but not least, um, life is kind of like a beaten heart, right? Um, you know, and what what is significant about a beating heart? There's ups, there's downs. There's ups, there's downs, right? And that's the function of a heart. And if ever it is stuck in one of those <laughs> places, whether up or down, uh, you're probably in a bad place, right? Yeah. <laughs> your heart is supposed to be up and down, up and down. So when things aren't going your way and things are down, do recognize that eventually they will come up, right? But if you are up, and you are finding that success, don't get too comfortable because at any moment it could go back down. But the trick is be where your feet are, be comfortable where your feet are. And when things are thrown your way, embrace them, right? I'm not saying it's always going to be fun. Embrace it, roll with the punches. It's all about how you react to it, not what's actually going on, right? Be where your feet are, go out there, hustle, continue getting those leases, man. And if, if you need a good read, yeah they got releasing <laughs> <laughs> oh well man I, usually i have like a little extra things to say on the back end of closing thoughts but man you just you drop the mic <laughs> i got nothing else guys just i want y'all to rewind watch this episode again pick up the gold nuggets that uh william just freely gave i mean this is a master class on on shifting perspective and doing things better so guys go out grab this book i'm going to put the link to get this book i'm going to put a link to empower pc uh, on here as well follow william on linkedin he's got some great stuff out there as well um so make sure you check him out absolutely incredible guys thank you for joining us william thank you pleasure. for your time and your, your wisdom you. and we will see you on the next episode of the super fantastic exchange see y'all